Yo! What's up everyone, Bytor here. We wanted to say thank you so much for reaching out to us and trusting us to prepare you for your interviews. We have had a big influx of emails with requests, questions, and greetings. We wanted to truly apologize if we have been late replying to you. We are still a very small team that is juggling this channel and our own jobs as well. We understand that uploading a video once a week could be slow for some of you. We constantly get requests to share more content through email. Unfortunately, we cannot do that as we strive to bring you the best content. A question without a detailed answer may not be as beneficial as you cannot possibly know if you answered it correctly or not. Also, remember, interviews are not about right or wrong answers. Instead, it is the technical discussion and your problem-solving skills that actually matter. We recently gave feedback to a ninja during a mock interview. The feedback went along the lines of, if we ask a question and the candidate answers it right away without hesitation, that just tells us that the candidate has either seen this question before or has memorized the answer. This in and of itself is not truly a problem. But from the interviewer's perspective, we have not gotten any additional data point as to what your technical skills are. That is why just giving you questions for the sake of questions will not be beneficial. We are still brainstorming ways to release content much faster to all of you. In the meantime, we will continue with the current trajectory and keep uploading content as well as making ourselves available through email to help you with your interviews. All right, so let's get on with the content for today. This is a fundamental question that we believe every hardware engineer should be very comfortable answering. If you're a power electronics engineer, this is the foundation of your field. The interviewer will show you the following LC circuit and say the following. Imagine I hit my circuit with a step response from zero to one volt. What does my output look like? I am going to give you 10 seconds to pause the video and try to answer the question for yourself. If you answer, it will oscillate, then technically you are right. But again, put yourself in the shoes of the interviewer. The answer by itself means absolutely nothing. This answer is equivalent to the interviewer asking, what is the temperature outside? And you replying, well, it's cold. It means nothing. If you answer by saying it will oscillate, it is likely the interviewer will push you and say, can you draw the voltage waveform at the output? Please do yourself a favor and don't just draw this. When interviewers ask these kind of questions, they are after concrete information that can be derived from the known variables of your circuit. So we can start our answer by stating the following. We cannot possibly understand what the voltage at the output is doing without looking at the current charging the capacitor. In other words, the current through the inductor. So let's draw two XY plots, one for the output voltage and another for the current through the inductor. A question to ask the interviewer could be, can we assume the capacitor to be initially discharged? We will assume the interviewer said yes, the out starts at zero. So we can draw the following. Let's draw our step input response at the top. Then V out is zero and the current through the inductor is also zero until the step response. Right after the step, we have a voltage drop across the inductor, a delta V of one volt. That means the inductor should start building current. We know the voltage across the inductor is equal to L di dt. Solving for di means that delta v divided by l times delta t will give us the slope of the current. In other words, the slope is defined as the input voltage 1 volt minus the output voltage 0 divided by l. The current through the inductor will charge the capacitor and raise v out. We know that the current through the capacitor is equal to c dv dt. 
In other words, the voltage across the capacitor will be the integral of the current charging it. As the voltage V out increases, the current charging the capacitor will decrease because the delta V across the inductor will start getting smaller and smaller. That means the current through the inductor will not always be linear. In fact, it will start rounding at the top. When V out is exactly equal to the input step voltage of one volt, the current through the inductor will stop increasing. However, as the voltage keeps increasing, at some point V out will be greater than V in. That means the current through the inductor will start to decrease. It is important to note that the current is still positive. That means the voltage at the output will continue to increase. Once the current reaches zero, we will have reached the maximum output voltage. Since one half of the cycle took us to one volt, then the other half of the cycle should contribute the same increase, meaning V out will peak at two volts. Since the delta V is still negative, the current through the inductor will now go negative. This means the output voltage will start to fall. In a similar way, once V out is equal to the input voltage of one volt, the current through the inductor will stop decreasing since the delta V across the inductor is once again zero. And the cycle repeats itself. And there you have it. This fundamental question is one that engineers seem to struggle with the most. But if you manage to answer it properly, you are guaranteed to add valuable points to your overall interview score. See you next time. Cheers.